My name is Ian McCake. I'm uh, uh, many different things, all revolving around the idea of storyteller. I've uh, been a concept artist in many different films. I was an illustrator, a book cover, and record cover artist. Um, currently, I'm producing, directing, writing, and designing my own feature film, and bringing out uh, three different children's books as a follow-up to my novel from a couple years ago. Um, strange novel, which was part story, part art book, and part drawing classes. Um, it seems very schizophrenic. The reason I do it that way is, is it's different mediums for telling a story, and I'm fascinated by the change of medium. I'm fascinated that you can jump up on a table and perform a story that way, or you can grab a mic and do it as a radio play, play or you can write it down on a piece of paper, or better yet, draw it in pictures and tell it in pictures. So my fascination has always been drawing as a language. I was uh, invited here to Loughborough University for the Drawing Research Network's conference on drawing knowledge. Uh, it's outside of my normal realm. I usually use film language and communicate to film people or um, illustrator language and communicate to publishers. So one of the uh, intriguing parts for me was to come here and listen to the new language and actually understand how people outside of my industry view something that is fundamental to both of the professions that I'm in, the, the illustrator and the, the filmmaker, which is drawing. Um, and in our industry, there is no question, drawing is a language, it is the language, and it's how all the different departments, costume departments, production designers, directors, actors, it's the language we all speak in. Words tend to be more the subtitles to what's going on when, in the visuals when you're watching a movie. Um, so. We all have to be extremely literate in speaking in pictures. One of the things I found coming here, even from the first talks that there were this morning, was just a different way of, of thinking of picture making. And the frost out will be. But actually, if I may say, while we're still rolling, that, that thing that just happened here is the thing that we find very hard to recreate on a computer, which can erase a history of the drawings that you're doing, and drawing on paper, which is something that shows everything, including the happy accidents. We, that that happened back there has now become something you play off of, something that you can build into your drawings, very much like the, the grain of sand inside the pearl that mm -hmm. then you weave a pearl around. Um, you, you play with the moment-by-moment -moment process of making that drawing. One of the things we do when we're, we're teaching um, filmmaking language to newcomers, new kids who have only ever learned on a computer how to draw, is to uh, make, make a commitment to the moment. You make a mistake, you throw something down there, and you work around it. Very often you just flatten your layers, don't allow yourself to do the undo button, treat it as if it was a, a real a real physical activity um, mm. to the point where you'll actually have to manufacture mistakes, you'll have to manage, uh, manufacture moments like that mm. so that randomness can happen on the computer screen. Mm. Um, it's frightening, I mean, if you remember probably the first time you ever uh, did a drawing and people were watching and there's a lot of pressure there to try and create a good image, but it's really not about creating good image as much as it is about communicating an idea or a story point. Um, what the thing itself looks like is actually secondary. The Drawing Research Network is, is a brand new uh, adventure for me. I um, hadn't seen it or been aware of it until Emma, you showed me um, what this was like. And, uh, and reading through, I discovered it does cover the three areas that I'm mostly interested in. I, I draw all the time, every day. I have since I was four years old. It's a rule because the first day that you forget, you start to slip back, and the second day the audience knows, and the third day, you know, it's gone to hell. So I make it a rule to draw every single day. I'm a practicing draftsman. Um, but I also, the, the finishing act of doing any kind of drawing is to actually teach it, because very often we forget. We forget the stuff that we do when we draw. You know, a lot of it is about blank space. You draw a shadowy side to a nose here, a little hint of the nostril on that side, and it conveys the whole idea of a nose. But the nose you didn't draw is made up of this core plane with a bone that comes down to here and this little triangular bit that goes off and becomes a socket of the eye. And if you don't remember that those things are there to be left out by communicating them to somebody, you will forget them. And pretty soon that shadow on the side will drift up the side of the face and your nose will just all fall apart. So teaching for me is an act of remembering what you know and what you're not showing. You also learn, I don't know, 
as much from your students as you ever do in teaching them. You see a fresh point of view, you see things you haven't even considered yet, and it helps take your art to a whole new level as well, as well as giving back and passing back to your students. As a designer, um, it took me a long time, my degree is in design, it took me a long time to actually understand what design is, as opposed to just, just drawing or painting. For me, design is uh, drawing and painting in service of answering a question. Uh, what, what would a car that has to go along the ocean bottom and drive along a road and fly to the moon actually look like? And you, you sit down and you puzzle it out and you puzzle it out in a series of pictures. Uh, in my particular case, I'm called in and my, my studio is called in. It's kind of a visual script doctor when there's a lot of problems in a film. So uh, the, the story's not working and you're not sure why. Uh, the, it's usually because the character, you're not sure what they want. And what they want isn't big enough or it isn't something we want them to want. Or the obstacles are just far too small and they just could go to the corner store and get it. So you want to build those walls higher and the biggest wall of all is the one that you build inside them. And so you, you start drawing all that in pictures because as I say, primarily it's a visual medium. You've got to get it like that. You might have blinked or sneezed or come into the theater late and you missed that line of dialogue. But every visual has got to reinforce exactly what was there. So, so I use design to answer story problems and again, that's my main focus, is visual storytelling. To me, the Drawing Research Network is something I encountered today, and I only have a morning of experience, but already in that morning, I saw a lot of different styles and uh, approaches to drawing intersecting with each other, and I was scribbling down on paper as fast as I could because it was making connections with me that I'd never thought of before. Um, and that, that line, that place where things meet, that borderland, if you will, between good and evil and light and dark and architecture and theater, um, all of a sudden makes the most interesting place to me. I was always taught that the secret of life is contrast, and the borderland is exactly where you find uh, contrast. Uh, I wrote a book all about it, Shadowline. It's, uh, it was an art book, and I was trying to find a through line through a lot of my, my paintings and drawings, and it seemed to be that place where the beauty and the beast and good and evil always met. Um, to my joy, I come here and I find it's full of shadow lines.